Pennsylvania, we had the big coal boom. We also have oil. And now the Marcellus Shale. We also had the big forestry, you know, timber. And I think we've learned a lot from the past mistakes. We learned that if you just leave coal mines and abandon them, you're gonna wind up with acid mine drainage, which destroys everything. And we learned that we need to have trees and don't strip everything down all the way. Aldo Leopold, John Muir, Teddy Roosevelt were the first environmentals um, that looked at nature and said, you know, we got to preserve, but we also have to use. The history of forestry in America is, is linked to the creation of America and in industry. Uh, there was no forestry to begin with. The, uh, the settlers just cleared what they needed and then timber barons cleared what they needed. Uh, and at one point, Pennsylvania was completely clear cut with a few exceptions here and there. Uh, so there was no look at the future. There was only a look at now. Uh, it wasn't really uh, forestry, it was uh, timber extraction. And what went wrong was described by Gifford Pinchot. Uh, he said that the state of Pennsylvania was a vast wasteland of destroyed forest with wildfires burning out of control. Uh, that creates kind of a uh, epic type of scene in my mind as to what the devastation was to the environment. There has been forever in America this two-way street. One side is preservation and the other side is conservation. Foresters are always trying to mesh those two together. And the classic example of that is Gifford Pinchot uh, for conservation and John Muir for preservation. John Muir thought that certain areas, certain forests should never be touched. They should be left to grow wild, to uh, be there forever for, for humanity. Gifford Pinchot said, no, we need wise use. We need to be able to maintain these forests. We need to utilize the resource. Foresters are always trying to mesh those two together. Even though my background is heavily into harvesting and regeneration and the manipulation of the resource, I still hug trees. What most small forest owners might not know is the value, the monetary value of their stands. Or they might not know the species composition or the history of their stands. Um, Pennsylvania used to be predominantly uh, conifer forest with uh, uh, eastern white pine and eastern hemlock as being the primary trees. So now the entire state is almost all oak, hickory, and maple. So there's been a huge change. I'm somewhat uh, fascinated with the way things used to be and the way things used to be done. Um, I would have liked to have seen what the forests were like back in the 1800s and a lot of it back then was just, if it was a tree, it got cut down. Um, now we look at species, we look at health, we look at uh, markets and viability. one of the world's leading hardwood producers, uh, just Pennsylvania. And a lot of our logs, they never see the inside of a mill here in Pennsylvania. Um, so the global economy or understanding the economics of that and the prices and just availability and how things fluctuate is critical. Timber as a crop, or looking at it in that way, it's, it's really 
not a whole lot different than growing corn or any other crop that you would harvest on a yearly basis, except we extend our harvest out to 80 or 90 years on a rotation. Um, but during that time, you have to tend what's there. If you want sustainability and you want healthy forests, saving everything is not the best way to go. You always have to take out something to allow something else to take its place. Trees are great, but there's a time when they're economically or biologically mature, and you have the option at that point, if all other conditions are right, to regenerate. And if that's possible, then doing that is the right thing to do, because you're then putting more trees in that space of one and giving more a, a better environment to grow in and a better chance to become mature themselves. When I go into, especially a planted forest plantation, uh, I know probably planted by the Civilian Conservation Corps. So people back in a very difficult economic time, working for the government, went out in the woods of Pennsylvania and planted these trees, which we are now seeing at maturity and are able to harvest. Without those plantings, we wouldn't have some of the species that we're using today. Its short-term goal was to employ people, and its long-term goal is outstanding. We now have these resources that were planted and created that we're using today and we'll use uh, into the future.